Hey everyone, Rose here, and I'm back with a dragon. Around the end of 2019 and 2020, I redrew some of the old dragons from my middle school sketchbook. I had a lot of fun with those, and I wanted to kind of make that into a tradition, something I do at the end of each year. But at the end of last year, 2021, I was quite busy, so instead I'm doing it now. Like last time, I made a poll for you guys to decide which of the dragons from my sketchbook I should redraw, and it was quite close for quite a while, but in the end the cloud dragon came out on top. So that's the one I'm going to be redrawing today. I had a lot more difficulty with the design of this dragon than I did with the other two, and I think the main reason for that is that I just don't like it as much. For the others, I generally still like the sort of concept and the basic design I'd come up with as a kid. I obviously still made some changes, especially to the anatomy, but the general vibe sort of stayed the same. But for this one, I didn't feel like there was much of a vibe there, if you understand what I mean. It's just sort of a normal looking dragon popping out of the clouds. There's nothing really sky about it. So for this one, I started out with a whole bunch of sketches to figure out how to make this dragon feel more sky. Eventually, what I ended up with was a very long snake-like dragon without any legs and with four bird wings instead of two regular dragon wings. 2013 Rose probably wouldn't approve of this because I remember that I didn't really like having feathered wings on dragons for the longest time, but I decided to give them that anyway, because I felt like it matched this theme of sky a bit more. Like feathers are nice and soft, like clouds, and also I think birds just fly a bit higher. I don't know, I tend to associate bats more with like flying through the forest and chasing after insects close to the ground, and less of like migrating way high up in the sky. That's more of a bird thing. That being said, I don't completely hate the idea I had for the original. It was supposed to be a kind of elemental dragon that's not only coming out of the cloud, but also in a way forming itself out of the clouds. And I wanted to like bring in some elements of that in the new design. So again, I made this one coming out of the clouds and I also gave it a sort of mane on the back of its head that's clouds. So the body is also fading into more of this intangible cloud stuff. Now, kids. If you look on my channel, you'll probably notice that most of the dragons that I've drawn are um, sitting on the ground or like lying down on the ground or whatever and not flying. And there is a reason for that. Wings are very hard. Unless I'm like drawing a dragon directly from the top view or directly from the bottom, I have to add perspective to them wings and that is a pain. So I opened up Blender for this one and just very quickly modeled or like blocked out the shape of this dragon with its four wings so I can mess around with different camera angles and figure out like what perspective would make sense. I also added in some lights and a quick background so I could use it as lighting reference just in case, though I didn't really end up using it much for that just because I didn't place the lights accurately to what I wanted in the actual scene. So yeah, I don't use 3D scenes very often as references while painting, but it's still a very useful tool to have available for the situations where I need it. I'd highly recommend for those of you artists out there to try out different mediums and different kinds of art. They might not necessarily seem completely connected starting out, but very often some skills and tools you have in one kind of art can really help you in another kind. There's no cheating in art, as long as you aren't completely copying someone else's artwork and calling it your own, using all the tools you have available to help make the artwork better or make the process easier is always good. Anyway, back to the model itself. I sketched over the model to get the basic shape of stuff like the wings, and then I hid it and added in the remaining details that weren't in the model itself. So, like, the feather detail in the wings, the clouds around it, the head, and the clouds around the neck. These are all things I could have also added in the 3D model to have an even sort of more detailed reference for myself, but 
For me, it's faster to do them in the painting itself. Next thing to figure out is the colors. For that, I duplicated the sketch and scaled it down a bit so I could dry out different color schemes on small thumbnails. I already knew starting out what kind of colors I wanted the scene to have. I wanted it to be a really bright sunny day with a bright blue sky in the background and really harsh white sunlight and some nice golden accents on the dragon. But just to make sure, I still tried out a couple of different color schemes, uh, specifically some sunsetty ones. And I do think a sunset scene would work pretty well for this kind of dragon. The main reason I didn't want to do it is because this sort of bright midday light isn't something I do very often and I figured it would be a fun thing to mess around with. And I did a sunset dragon, or rather a sunrise dragon, very recently, so I didn't really want to repeat the same idea two times so close together. With my main sort of idea thumbnails done, I made some more iterations on the main blue theme. I wanted to mess around with the values a bit more, maybe try out a slightly different blue for the sky, and see how it would look with some light coming through the wings. I had quite a bit of difficulty with the uh, values on this one, you'll notice that I changed them quite a bit pretty near the end, and that's mostly because, logically to me, the shadows on the dragon should be darker than the sky because like, the, they aren't being hit by the sunlight directly, obviously, and they're being hit by sort of the scattered light from the sky, so they can't be brighter than the sky because they can't be like reflecting back more light than is hitting them. I even brought up some reference photos of like airplanes flying through the air and they also had shadows that were definitely darker than the sky behind it, but I didn't really like how it was looking so that was something I struggled with for quite a while. But despite my dissatisfaction with the shade of the shadows, I continued on to rendering. For that I skilled up and merged together my thumbnail and then separated it out into two layers. One for the foreground, which is the character in the clouds, and one for the background, which is just like the gradient for the sky. One interesting thing about the sky in this one, though, is I did something I don't think I've done before for any other painting, which is a sort of Dutch angle. I think Dutch angle is technically a film term, so it doesn't necessarily apply to paintings, but I'm still going to call it that. And by that I mean the horizon isn't horizontal. It's at almost a 45 degree angle, which I think makes the whole painting look a bit more dynamic and, um, like, interesting, I guess. For the rest of the rendering process, my workflow isn't really that different from how it usually is. The only real substantial difference I think here is that I didn't use a multiplier overlay layer for my shadows. I pretty much got those in just with a thumbnail, manually. And from there I'm just going around with the brushes I always use, I have those linked in the description, and I'm using the color picker to sort of pick a color and then blend stuff together, occasionally going to the color wheel to add a bit of an extra hue or so change around the saturation and stuff like that. And just going around, yeah, blending everything together, adding in more detail and depth where it's needed, and making the painting come together. One thing that's nice about a painting like this, which is a painting of a um, white character or like at least a monochromatic character of some kind, is that there is a whole lot of area on the painting that's grey, which means a whole lot of area where I could just go wild with the colours. If you have something really saturated, like say the sky, if I were to go in with something like a red or a purple or a green, you would notice that quite clearly, because, I mean, it's a red or a purple or a green on a blue sky. But when everything is so grey, it doesn't really matter what hue that grey has. So just taking all kinds of very slightly dis uh, like very, very slightly saturated colors and just mixing them together can create a really nice effect. And that's something I did a lot on, especially the wings, just because they're just large areas of relatively even value that wouldn't otherwise have much interest in going for them. 
So if you take a look carefully uh, now already and especially later and on the finished piece, you can see that there is a whole bunch of like blues and purples, occasionally even some greens and reds just all over on the uh, bottom surface of the wings and on those feathers sticking out, which is quite fun. Other than that, yeah, there's not that much to say about the rendering process. It's just a lot of going back and forth and refining stuff and blending stuff together, adding more colors and all that good stuff. So instead, I'm going to talk about some other aspects of this painting and like the character and just like painting in general. One thing that I think isn't very clear mostly in my videos and that I think is quite important to mention every once in a while is references. When painting or making 3D art or really doing any art in general, it's always a good idea to have references open. References can be a couple of things. Most of the time, I think for me and for most people, it's photos. Like photos of the thing you're trying to paint or photos of things that are kind of related. Like in this case, there aren't any images of dragons because sadly dragons aren't real. But there are a bunch of images of birds, especially like white birds or birds that are sort of lit from behind that I could use as references for the wings. And there are also images of clouds that I could use as references for the clouds and the cloud hair they have on their back. I also looked up some pictures of gold so I could figure out how best to render the horns and the scales on the bottom of the dragon. And all manner of stuff like that. In addition to photos like that, I also occasionally add some other artwork references to my reference files. Those are helpful for a number of different things. For example, I have some other images of cloud sort of creatures or cloud dragons in the reference file just to see as kind of inspiration for how other artists have executed the idea of a cloud dragon. My dragon didn't end up looking similar really to any of them, but they're still a nice idea to have in the back of your head, sort of as inspiration. Art references are also good for stuff like brushwork. I didn't use it for that as much for this painting, but a lot of the time when I'm painting plants, it's really useful to take a look at how other people go about simplifying them, because obviously if you're painting a landscape with plants, you don't want to paint every individual leaf. So taking a look at how other people go about simplifying those leaves, like what kind of shapes they use, what kind of brushes they use, what kind of textures, can really be a good jumping off point for like how you're going to approach those same kinds of things in your own painting. References like that are also good for figuring out sort of a level of stylization. Again, that's not something I used as much for this artwork, but for a lot of my 3D artwork, I tend to have other similar kinds of 3D characters open as references just to take a look at how the proportions look compared to say a real human as a sort of reference for how to make them look appealing and stuff like that. Using other artists reference is also nice for things like colors and composition like getting an idea of what works and what doesn't, what kind of colors look good together in a painting and just all kinds of stuff like that. That being said, when using other artworks or even photos as references, do be mindful of not just copying someone else's work. It can be useful as something like a study, which you're just making for yourself for the sake of learning and aren't really going to be sharing as your own artwork. And it's, of course, perfectly fine if you ask the artist and you have their permission or like it's a draw this in your style challenge. For example, a lot of the time, 3D artists will make artwork based off of people's 2D art, and with, that's fine as long as they have the permission of the artists to do that. But it's quite disrespectful to just take something somebody made and copy it and post it as your own, or like take somebody's design and make an artwork of it without their permission. So be mindful of that while using references. Use them as guides and inspiration and take bits and pieces of a whole bunch of different sources, but don't just take one reference or one or two references and stick to them really closely 
and like stick to someone else's ideas and designs without their permission. Now, there is a bunch of different ways to use references and to collect them. What I personally use for them is PureRef, which is a free piece of software, very practical. I'll try and remember to leave a link to that in the description below. And what I essentially have is a whole sort of collection of PureRef files for different occasions. In this case, I used one that has a whole bunch of references for dragons and one for landscapes. And based on the needs of the specific artwork, I can add extra references to it when I run into like something that might be missing. Generally, my primary sources for just photo references are Pinterest and Google Images. And then occasionally, if I'm looking for some artwork references, I might take a look on ArtStation if I can find anything on the topic. And yeah, I just collect those over time. I have ever-growing PureRef files. So for each new artwork I do, I need to find less and less new references, which is practical. So yeah, I hope this talk about references has been helpful to you in some way, shape, or form. But for now, let's head back to the time lapse itself. At this point, I'm almost done. You would have noticed at some point earlier while I was talking, I ended up lighting, lightening up the shadows like I mentioned at the beginning. And now I'm just adding in the final little bits of detail and like finishing touches to all the parts of the painting that I think still need it. I added in a few extra like bits of shadow or ambient occlusion to the wings because they were feeling a bit flat. I struggle with wings in general. Uh, they aren't something I draw very often, so I don't really have a good feel for them yet. But I think they turned out relatively good for the level of rendering I was going for with this painting. And now I add in my final brush strokes and use a filter layer to do a little bit of color correcting. And with that, this here redraw is done. And here's the finished painting. Like I mentioned earlier, this one turned out really different from the original design in my old sketch. I didn't really connect with that drawing as much as I did with the other two dragons that I redrew from that sketchbook. So this ended up as less of a redraw of an old drawing or like a redraw of an old design and more as like revisiting the same concept again but building on it with my current sensibilities rather than with my ideas and likes as an 11 year old. I'm not sure if 2013 11 year old Rose would like this dragon as much. I know I didn't like bird wings on dragons that much and I'm not sure if I would have been happy with a lack of legs, but 2022 me likes it quite a lot. I'm pretty happy with the design. And now one last little thing before I end off this video. All of the dragons I had drawn in this sketchbook, or at least most of them, have little descriptions to them because I wanted to make this kind of book of dragons with all their strength and like little descriptions. So to end off this video, I'll read you the description for this dragon. Name, Cloud Swimmer. Color, White. Strength, Snow, Rain, Hail, etc. Size. Changes. Length. Also changes. Weight. 0 0.001 kilograms. Wingspan. Changes. Speed. 100 kilometers per hour. Food. Clouds. About this dragon. The cloud swimmer makes weather. Hides from airplanes and eats clouds. He flies with the wind. Blood temperature. None. I think it would be fun to make a sort of new Book of Dragons description for this new version of the Cloud Swimmer, and maybe even some of my other dragons. So if you have suggestions for that, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And with that, that's all from me for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little trip into my old art, and maybe even learned something from the time lapse. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and I'd love to see you again on the next video. Anyway, I hope you all have a nice week, and see you all next time. 
If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of me or my art, I have a link tree down in the description below with links to all my social media, as well as the Discord server where you can hang out and chat, and even my commission info if you would like some custom art from me.